Welcome to HGTV. You're now rocking with your boy. So the recap of yesterday, I would like to say F the Chargers and Herbert. Herbert cost me in the fantasy football league. Thank you, Herbert. Yo, overrated, but ox, but hyphen ox, you. I do not like you right now. If I see you in public, I will tell you you are trash and you are a bum. People like HD, but he got more money than you. I don't care if he had a billion dollars. He a billion dollar bum. That's what he is. That's what I would tell him. You billion dollar bum baby. Now. The Chargers basically had everybody out before the game due to the 1-9. Which, even if I started Brady, he sucked too. He sucked worse than Herbert yesterday. So... In this game and everything that went down, now, Justin Herbert, 35 attempts, 27 completed passes, 336 yards, a TD, two interceptions. Um, One of them, I think, was a little bit overthrown, and then the other one was kind of, I think it was tipped. I'm not sure I remember. But he had two picks, and um, you had Justin Jackson, da da da, all of this. Now, Davis Mills, who everybody's trying to make the next savior for the goddamn Texans, like he's gonna be the next greatest quarterback ever. He's average. The team basically had a good running game. Now, this is what I look at. I look at what the team does, not the individual player. Say it with me, team sport versus individual sport. If this is tennis, you would focus more on the errors and the things they were doing that were correct. It would be about them because it's an individual sport, just like golf is. So the total yards, the Houston Texans got 437. The Chargers defense has been trash all year. Then you had, of course, the Chargers. Of course, they had 417 yards total. Now, passing yards, the Chargers are going to win that with 328 to 248. The rushing yards, Houston had 189 to the Chargers, 89 yards. Average yards per play, which is the totality with rushing and all that passing together, seven, seven yards per play for the Chargers. Seven yards for Houston. So that's about even. Points scored, 41 to 29. Fumbles lost. You had um, the Chargers have one, the Houston zero. Interceptions thrown, Chargers two, Houston zero. I think Herbert threw one for a pick six, if I believe. I believe so. Sacks allowed, both one each. Third down efficiency. Both teams were very good. They were in the 60 percentile. Time of possession, Chargers had 25 minutes to the Houston Texans, 35 minutes. That's where you also lost the game. Penalties, Houston had more with 10 to the, to the 5 to the Chargers. The reason the Chargers lost was because of turnovers. You cannot turn the ball over interceptions thrown, and then they had a fumble loss. They had three key turnovers. The Houston Texans had zero. I don't care what game you play. If you have zero turnovers, you would nine times out of ten win the game. Now, the sacks, even third down. Chargers have been a great third down team all year. What the hell was Marcus Smart doing? Sorry, guys. I'm looking at this sorry basketball. Y'all be telling me, HD, you need to watch. Tell us what's going on. I'm going to tell you what's going on. The goddamn Celtics need to trade one of them. They need to trade Chocolate Boy. They need to trade Lil Lighty. They need to trade one of them motherfuckers. 
Because they both getting on my nerves. One dude too light skinned. The other dude is dark as hell. And they ain't mixing and matching. They basically not matching at all. So. Also. The time of possession. What people don't understand. Time of possession is the controlling of the clock. If your team has the ball a lot more than the other team, you also can win games. But sometimes that's misleading. There has been times when a team has had less time of possession and won the game because they were able to make big plays. But if you're not making big plays and you're giving the ball away more, you're going to lose this game. The Chargers lost this game because of turnovers, lost fumble, first quarter, they put up six points to Houston's seven. Second quarter, they put up six to Houston's 10. So Houston was at 17 while the Chargers were at 12. And then the Chargers, I believe, missed some field goals too. They missed some extra points. Then the third quarter, the Chargers had three and then which was 15 to the 20 to the 17, 15 to 17 at this point. Then the Texans got 24 points to the Chargers 14 in the fourth quarter, which made it 41 29. So that's why the Chargers lost the game. Bums. <laughs> now, the next game, the LA Rams in Minnesota. Now, Matt Stafford was not looking good in this game, and he has not looked good the whole season, I believe. That's just my opinion. Now, I don't go to individual stats. I go to team stats because it's a team. We need to get back to holding the team accountable than just holding one person accountable. This is why I don't really like basketball like I used to. Because it's too one guy oriented. Now, total yards, both the both teams, 361 Minnesota, the LA's 356. Passing yards, LA had 197, the Minnesota's 295. Rushing yards, LA had 159 to 66 rushing yards from Minnesota. Um, the average yards per play, five and then six. Minnesota has six to LA's five. Points scored, 30 to 23. Fumbles lost. Both teams did a great job. They didn't fumble the ball. Now, interceptions thrown. The Rams threw three, while Minnesota had one. Sacks allowed. LA allowed zero to Minnesota's three. Third down efficiency. L.A. was 50%, while Minnesota was 16%. That is not good. When your third down percentage is that low, that means you have a lot of three and outs, which gives the other team a lot. And time of possession was 30 minutes even for both teams. So both teams in the 60 minutes of play, they had 30 minutes each. That's mind-boggling. Penalties, Minnesota had two to L.A. one. Now, the reason that Minnesota lost this game is because Minnesota was too pass heavy. Minnesota is a run first team. If their running isn't up over 100 or they're getting that many yards per carry, they will lose that game. L.A. is more of a passing team, but they were able to take advantage of running the ball. Matt Stafford threw three picks. Okay. Cousins only had one. So where this game was lost was mainly on third downs. The Minnesota Vikings were 16%. If they could have converted on a few third downs, they would have been able to win this game. This is why they lost the game as a team. Now, you may have watched it and you may be like, oh, well, I thought this was a bad. Matt Stafford played like crap. Kirk Cousins played better than Matt Stafford. Kirk just down the stretch could not complete the third downs. This is why I tell you, third downs are very pivotal in games to win it. 
That's why I just told you the last game. Time of possession doesn't mean the whole entire game. This is the stats you guys look at. Stop looking at those individual stats. This guy had 200 yards running. This guy had 300 yards. No, 100 some yards catching the ball, receiving yards. But did he win? No. See, sometimes stats don't equate to win. Sometimes stats help you get back in the game, but it doesn't help you close the game. So this game was won because the Rams were able to complete their third downs a lot better than Minnesota in certain situations, and they were able to run the ball. And they were able to get to 30. Now, first quarter, L.A. put up seven. Then they put up six points in the second quarter to Minnesota's three. Minnesota outscored them in the third, 10 to seven. Both, both teams scored 10 in the fourth quarter, which equates to 30 to 23. So this game was lost because third down third downs were very pivotal and nobody was really completing it well for the Vikings. Okay. Now. The next game was Pittsburgh and Kansas City. I saw some of this. I was on the road yesterday, guys. I was moving around, had gifts to give out to family. So I saw some of this game. I saw the blowout early on in the second quarter. Now, these are the stats for the team. All right. Total yards, the Kansas City Chiefs had 381 to the um, Steelers, 303. The passing yards were 173 Steelers to 254 Kansas City. Rushing yards, Pitt had 130 compared to Kansas City's 127. So by running the ball, that added an extra dimension to Kansas City, which helped them out tremendously. Now, average yards per play, Pittsburgh had four yards per carry. Kansas City had six. Points scored 10 to 36. Now, fumbles lost. Pittsburgh lost the ball, um, I believe, one time to Kansas City zero. No, excuse me. Pittsburgh lost the ball two times to Kansas City zero. Pittsburgh had one interception. Kansas City had zero. Guys, this is called this is called a perfect hat trick in football. No interceptions thrown, no fumbles lost, and you basically um And you basically, um, in rushing, you had almost the same amount of rushing yards as them. You just had more passing. So that's a hat trick for me, for the, the Chiefs. That was great by the Chiefs, zero turnovers. Sacks allowed, both teams allowed two. Third down efficiency, they both were terrible. Pittsburgh had 38%, the Kansas City's 36%. So about the same on third downs. Time of possession, Kansas City had 34 minutes compared to the Pittsburgh Steelers 35. I mean 25, excuse me. So the game was lost off time of possession. That means the Chiefs held the ball a lot longer. Plus, they didn't turn the ball over. When you don't turn the ball over, this shows whether you're a great team or just the okay team. This showed that the, the Chiefs went with something, which was the run game, to keep those pass rushers off of them, to make sure they kept them honest, because the Steelers are very good at pass rushing. So all you got to do is run the ball against them, and you'll be able to win that matchup. So tip your hat off to the Chiefs. They didn't turn the ball over, and I believe the Steelers had a few missed field goals. So that also hurt them. So 
First quarter, Kansas City went up 14-0. Then they went up 9-0 in the second quarter. So 14-9, 15-17, 18-19, 20-21, 22-23. So they basically gave up 23 points in the first half and they scored zero. You already lost. Because you're going to you're going to play into the Chiefs hands. The Chiefs are a great pass rushing team and a pass defensive team. So if you're behind 23 to nothing, you're going to lose that game 9 times out of 10 if you're playing against a pass rushing team because you're going to be too busy trying to throw the ball. Second half, Pittsburgh scored three points to Kansas City seven in the th- excuse me in the third, fourth quarter, seven points for Pittsburgh, six by Kansas City, thirty six to ten. So tip your hat off to Kansas City. They won the game. They did their job. They um they're showing that they're the best team right now. They're showing it. In the AFC. And plus, Pat Mahomes was throwing from the pocket a little more, which is pretty good. Now, we have the the team formerly known as the Washington Deadskins. And then we got the Dallas Cowbots. <laughs> because Jerry Jones <laughs> wires you guys to say, uh, we're going to the Super Bowl. We're going to the Super Bowl every year. And then you guys choke when you need to win. Now, let's look at the stats for this. I didn't get a chance to watch this game. So I'm just going to go over to give you the right stats. Why the Dallas Cowboys won this game. Um, Total yards, the Cowboys had 497 to um, Washington's 257. Passing yards, Dallas had 389 to Washington's 172. Rushing yards, Dallas had 108 to Washington's 85. Average yards per play, Dallas was averaging 7 to the Washington football team's 5. Points scored, 56 to 14. Fumbles lost. Washington and Dallas had zero turnovers on fumbles. Interceptions throw Washington through two to Dallas zero. Sacks allowed Washington five, Dallas three. Third down efficiency, Dallas was at 66%, the Washington's 23. Time of possession, Washington had the ball 28 times. I mean, 28 minutes compared to Dallas 31 minutes. So basically this game was lost on Third downs and turnovers. When you turn the ball over, guys, it's like this. If you have a if you have your if you have a baby, you have a kid, what happens when you drop that kid? He, he could die or get hurt. You have to think of the game like that. If you got the ball, that ball is your baby. You gotta protect it. You gotta make sure nobody steals that from you. You have to have it that tight and you have to con- you have to be concerned over it that much. And this is why Dallas won the game, because their defense shut down the running game, which is Washington's strength. Passing game, they forced two turnovers. That's the game. That's the game, guys. Third down down efficiency, 66-23. And turnovers is why the Dallas Cowboys won the game. Now, let's look at their points in the first quarter. 21 to nothing. When Dallas is up on you 21 nothing, now you got to pass. There you're playing into their hands. Just like I talked about the Chiefs, Dallas is the same way. They love to pass rush. When you are in a lot of third downs, they are coming. Michael Parsons, Lawrence, Gregory, they are coming after your ass like you owe them money. Hey, hey, man, you heard about him? Yeah, he owe us some money. All right. Soon as that ball snap, we on that ass. They on that ass. I'm telling you. They saw nothing but Heineken. They really drunk a Heineken. <laughs> they drunk some Heineken last night. 
Then I believe they had a pump block. So this Dallas team is dangerous. I mean, they're the cow bots to me still. I still don't think they're going to go all the way, but they could. Their defense is playing vicious. Their special teams is playing tough. Offensively, Dak Prescott came back to the world. Like, yo, he's been getting all this criticism. For what? In the games Dak played where he wasn't very good, they still won. That means he did his damn job. <laughs> you guys have to focus on the team. Me, I look at the team stats. I don't look at individual players. Seriously. If you look at it from a team perspective, you will understand football and basketball the best. I could go look at the stats from a basketball game and show you team-wise why a team won, why a team lost. You see, you guys go look at individual play and be like, oh, this guy dropped 30, 10, and 10. They still lost. Well, do you see why? They were giving up this many points on the offensive end. They played no defense. Okay? You want me to continue? Blocks. They were impeded from getting to the lane. Free throws. They could have missed a lot of free throws. They're shooting in the 50 percentile as a team. Have y'all ever thought about that? Come on, guys. We have to smarten up when it comes to understanding a team. Okay? So, let's go to the playoff picture. I'm going to give you guys the playoff picture right here. Um, those are the games that I that were on TV, so I'm only going to address the games on TV. Monday Night Football is tonight. Um, I'm not doing stream yards for a while. I'll probably do a stream yard this week. It's going to be about probably the top 50 best hip-hop male artists. We did the female, but we're going to do the males. Um, We only got the 40 for the female, and I want to leave it at that. Because we might have somebody come up later. So. Let's see. Now in the playoff picture right now. In NFC the Packers have clinched the spot. The Cowboys have clinched the spot. Rams, Bucks, and Cardinals. All four of the. All one, two, three, four. Five of these teams have clinched the playoff spot. Dallas has a chance to be the number one. If the Packers lose in the next coming weeks, then the Cowboys could be the number one seed. The Rams, they will win the division, I believe. The Cardinals, they've clinched a spot. Even if they lose out, they still would be at that fifth seed. Now, in the hunt, you got the Niners, Eagles, Saints, Vikings, Falcons, and the, Washington, the team formerly known as the Washington Deadskins. Now... I believe that the Eagles and Niners, I believe that the Eagles and Niners will make the playoffs. I believe the Saints will miss it by a little bit. I just don't trust the Saints down the stretch without a quarterback. Their defense is going to have to play all 60 minutes, and that's hard to do. So the Vikings, I think they're not going to make it, or the Falcons, so... I believe the Niners and Eagles will make the last two spots in the NFC. And I believe that um, the Packers will hold on to the number one seed. But, hey, anything could happen. They could lose next week. Cowboys win. They could own the tiebreaker because of strength of schedule. Rams have a chance to get that number one seed. So I think the Packers will have the number one seed. I think the um, Bucks could get to the third seed. I don't think they'll get to number two. We'll see. But they might could get there if the Cowboys or Rams lose. Because the Rams own the tiebreaker because they beat our ass earlier this year. Now, in the AFC, the AFC is a little tough. AFC is a little crazier. Um, The Chiefs have clinched the playoff spot. They're the only ones who clinched it. So with them clinching it, the Titans are number two. The Bengals are number three. The Bills are number four. The Colts are number five. The Patriots are number six. The Ravens are seven. The Chargers are eight. The Raiders are nine. The Dolphins are 10. 
The Steelers are 11. The Browns are 12. Broncos are 13. Now, if Lamar Jackson comes back for these last two games, I believe the Ravens get the number seven spot. I think the Dolphins could sneak in. They, they would have to beat the Patriots, and the Patriots would have to lose down the stretch. I think Miami will beat the Patriots the last game of the season, and I believe they'll get in. I don't think the Chargers or Raiders will get in because I don't trust the Raiders' quarterback position. Derek Carr has been inconsistent. Now, if the Raiders, if Derek Carr goes without turning the ball over and actually they run the ball, the Raiders could sneak in. And if the Raiders sneak in and anything could happen, one game at a time, they could do it. But this is going to be tough. But the Dolphins, I think out of all those teams on the bubble with the Chargers, Raiders, Steelers, Browns, and Broncos, they are the toughest team. They got a defense that is hellacious. They have woken up the past five weeks. They've been whooping ass. They've been walking in people's house, slapping their mama, making a big-ass sandwich, and drinking some Kool-Aid. And then they go on about their day. They take the daddy big chair. They kick him out the big chair, and they watching TV. So, got to watch that. The Steelers, they're done. Um, The Steelers, Big Ben's done. Big Ben need to retire, go somewhere else, or just retire. He's looked terrible. The Browns, Baker Mayfield messed his shoulder up, but he was already overrated before that. They're done. Broncos, Teddy Bridgewater's done for the year. They're done as well. Drew Locke, he's a poor man version of Carr, so he sucks. He's not going to make it. Um, the Chargers, Raiders, and Dolphins is going to come down to them three teams. The Chargers still could have a chance. I don't trust their coach or play calling. I think that's going to be detrimental to them down the stretch. The only teams I see down the stretch that I think could get into the playoffs is the Ravens and the Dolphins. The Raiders would have to make it if I think Carr got hurt. Did Carr, get, Carr got hurt, I think. So if he's hurt, then they might have a chance. They might could find another quarterback who could fill in. Because the Raiders have a good, complete team. They just don't have a great leader at the quarterback position. That's been their only problem for the past three years. Hasn't been talent. It's been that position. But the Dolphins, Raiders, and Chargers are... And the Ravens, they are all on the bubble. So is the Patriots. But I believe the Indianapolis Colts will make it. And I think the Colts will be the most. Them and the Titans will give the Chiefs a run for their money. I'm still sticking with my Super Bowl pick. I think the Titans can make it. I know that's a far fetch. Because Tannehill, I don't trust him. To me, he's a notch above Carr, which isn't saying much. They're about the same QB. Um, So... What do you guys think of the assessment? Let me know if you disagree or if you like something else, you feel something should have been added. I didn't say the other games because I really didn't get a chance to look at those games. Those weren't nationally televised. I only talk about the televised games, guys. That's that's all I talk about. Um, So thank you guys for listening. Like, comment, subscribe, share this. Hit that notification bell to select all to receive upcoming notifications. And if you love what you hear, you go to the description box, click the link that leads you right to my cash app. You can donate to the page that way. You could give a dollar. Hell, you could give a million dollars. Whatever you want to give, we accept. So thank you all for listening. We out. Deezy.